the PFA are ready to reconsider their opposition to salary caps, despite winning a landmark legal ruling that prevented their introduction in League 1 and League 2 earlier this year. The players' union successfully argued in front of an independent arbitration panel that the EFL had breached rules by seeking to introduce salary caps this season without proper consultation, leading the planned wage bill ceilings of £2. £5 million and £1.5 million in League 1 and 2 respectively to be scrapped. In addition to unhappiness at the changes being rushed through during the pandemic, the PFA's initial hostility was based on their opposition to a fixed cap, which would have forced Sunderland into having the same wage bill as Fleetwood in League One for example. New Chief Executive Maheta Malango has visited all 72 EFL clubs since his appointment this summer and has indicated the union may support a more sophisticated form of cost control, such as a flexible cap based on the percentage of each club's turnover. Saul still aiming for the dugout Saul Campbell has not given up on his managerial aspirations, despite being out of work for 15 months. The former England defender is planning to visit Real Madrid, Bayern Munich and AS Roma for bespoke coaching clinics over the next few months as he seeks to increase his experience ahead of returning to the dugout, a glamorous itinerary that is a far cry from his previous jobs at Southend and Macclesfield. The Rubin role over Newcastle are the third club to have attracted the support of new director Jamie Rubin, who has taken a seat on the board following the completion of the Saudi Arabia-funded £305 million takeover. The 34-year-old son of billionaire property investor David Rubin was a regular in the East Stand Executive Club at Chelsea before becoming a director at Queen's Park Rangers, where he sat on the board for two years before standing down as Newcastle takeover talks intensified last year. Rubin Brothers now own 10% of Newcastle, with Saudi's public investment fund controlling 80% and broker Amanda Stavely the other 10%, and Jamie will represent that family's interests in the Northeast, being quick to tweet away the lads, after the takeover was completed. A web of demand Norwich sporting director Stuart Weber is attracting interest from a host of leading clubs as he has yet to commit to staying at Carrow Road beyond the end of the season. Weber opted not to sign an extension when head coach Daniel Farka signed a new four-year deal in the close season, and he plans to make a decision on his future towards the end of the campaign. Weber recruited Farka from Borussia Dortmund's reserve team shortly after arriving at Norwich four years ago and has impressed by assembling two promotion-winning squads from the championship on a limited budget. Qatar plans axe Gareth Southgate has abandoned plans to attend the Arab Cup in Qatar in December as part of a scouting mission ahead of the 2022 World Cup. The England manager has not visited Qatar since attending Liverpool's Club World Cup victory over Flamengo two years ago, but has opted to delegate the World Cup reconnaissance mission to backroom staff, who will advise on potential venues for training camps and hotels. Southgate will instead spend the start of December scouting at games and attending the draw for next year's Nations League, which clashes with the later stages of the Arab Cup. Texter's Dream New Crystal Palace shareholder John Texter has quickly become an influential figure behind the scenes at Selhurst Park, with his innovative business practices set to play a decisive role in shaping the future of the club. The American businessman's £90 million investment in Palace last summer helped facilitate a £65 million spending spree that saw seven new players join the club during the close season, with Texter taking a close interest in Patrick Vieira's recruitment plans, 